Anybody still have your Bible? Yeah? Great. Uh, anybody have an iPad or an iPhone that you use your Bible on? Too? Cool. That's what I do now, too. Um, I'm going to have you just kind of hold it for a second. If you don't mind, hold it up. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. All right. <clears throat> Lord, your word is so awesome. Thank you for it, God. It leads me. It guides me. It gives me strength, and I am wiped out. Your word is true, whether some believe it or not. Your word is true, period. I will do my best to love it, learn it, and live it. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Amen. Cool. Uh, I admit, <clears throat> my voice is hoarse from singing. I just love praising God. But, uh, yeah, right now I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm a little stressed. I might be, hopefully, um, talking to a few people here. It's been a really overly busy week. Anybody? Anyone? <laughs> um, it's just one of those weeks where you kind of say, man, if one more thing happens, just one more thing happens, I'm going to crack. Yep. Um, anybody? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's so much to do in life right now. I mean, personally, I'm balancing a lot of things. I've never been so busy in my life. However, I will tell you that life's never been so awesome. As I talk to people, though, I'm not alone. There's a lot of people that are overwhelmed. And they keep saying that one word, overwhelmed. There's a lot going on that can overwhelm us nowadays. I'm going to go through a few. That's <laughs> just a few. Uh, if I hit you, you can yell out, amen. That'd be cool. Uh, if you have a family, family's tough. It's a lot of work. Highly rewarding. Kids. But you have jobs. I know people trying to find jobs. I know people with money issues, trying to make ends meet. I know people trying to stay healthy that are struggling with their physical body. I know people that are trying to grow their relationship with God because they come from a place where they were struggling in the past with their relationship with God. But now they're reaching that point where they want to go, Lord, this is it. I'm getting back on track. And I won't even mention politics. I'll just keep that out. So <laughs> forget that. Uh, but working ourselves spiritually to try to just be the person God wants us to be. You wake up in the morning, and if anybody feels like this, where the alarm goes off, and it doesn't really sound like an alarm anymore, it sounds like, like when there's a horse race and the gates open and you hear that bell, you know, and you just start, you get up and you start rushing around. That's how I feel sometimes. It's like, but like this morning, I, I didn't sleep too, too much last night. I was, I think I was on Facebook with somebody, and I think Rhonda liked I go, Rhonda, you're 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> but um, but when, the, when the alarm does go off, you feel like, oh, here we go. And you feel like you're in this race. You get yourself ready. You try to get your kids ready. Get your spouse ready. If you work outside the house, you go through your day, you rush to work. You try to take a lunch if you get a lunch. You get home, you start your day all over again and as a parent or if you're a student and you're in school and you have homework to do. Maybe you're married, maybe you're single. Single dad, maybe a single mom. There's a lot of work to do. And there's plenty of work around the house. Maybe you're a caregiver and you help other people in your life. You clean the house, you do the chores. And do, then you, you deal with all these things that you think you know what you can deal with. And you think you have everything around you that you know that I have to deal with today, Lord. And then life throws you a curveball. And something else happens. That you weren't prepared for, but you try to deal with it anyway. And if you sleep, it's never enough. What's that? <laughs> Tommy. And, uh, and we were praying this morning, and, you know, Tommy, God bless her, we love her so much. And I told her that the topic was overwhelmed, and Tommy, stand up for a second. <laughs> Just for a second, tell people why you're a little overwhelmed. <laughs> She's pregnant. And she already has an amazing daughter. Um, sometimes you feel like you can barely breathe. Anybody? And I was praying with somebody this morning, and... She told me something else that's going on in her family. And, and you're going, really? Wow. Shouldn't be so hard. But it is. However, we've got to find a way to keep pushing on. And I'm going to show you a few slides to try to put some levity in this. But here's some sayings I found about being overwhelmed. And just see if anybody can relate. Let's go to the first slide. For overwhelmed women and moms... Yeah, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Go ahead and ask. Ask me what I do all day. I dare you. <laughs> moms? Anybody? Moms? moms? Next one. Is this any woman? 
I smile to hide how completely overwhelmed I am. And my wife, God bless my wife, sometimes when I come home as a man, I just want to vent. And she's had a really rough day. But she'll put that smile on and she'll listen to me. Next one. Sometimes a mom just needs a five minute break. Just give me five minutes. Misty, anybody? You know what I, you know, I got to tell you something. You know the first thing I thought of when I looked at this picture was, wow, I haven't seen a clothesline in a really long time. <laughs> anybody know what the clothesline is? <laughs> All right, next one. You know you're really stressed out when you start getting on your own nerves. If I do that one more time, you know. All right, next one. I didn't know this. Stress is dessert spelled backwards. You just need more desserts to get rid of the stress. When you're stressed, just turn it around. Or go to Linda's house. Linda makes the best desserts. By the way, I'm a little overdue for lemon meringue pie, but I'm not going to say nothing. I'm okay. About once a month, she shows up with the, that's my weakness is lemon meringue pie. All right, next one. For dads and men, or men and dads. Stress? What stress? And I know that's what I look like when I go home. Uh, I, I, trust me, I, I kind of do. The moment when you have so much stuff to do, you just decide to take a nap. That couch looks awesome. Okay, don't be offended. Lord, please rapture all the stupid people today. We're a little overwhelmed down here. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that's how you feel sometimes. Anybody? Anybody? Especially when you're driving, I know. Oh my God. Stressed out? Don't give up. Moses was a basket case. In case you don't know, Moses' parents, they couldn't keep him. They threw him in a basket, threw him down the river. Anybody see the Ten Commandments? Yeah. There you go. What else I got? Okay, this is for everyone. Overwhelmed? It says, sure, I can handle the load, no problem. I got this. I got this. Put something else on the back, I can do it, sure. Poor donkey. All right, it's my favorite one. I'll read it to you. God has placed on earth to accomplish a certain amount of things before it is my time to go and be with him in heaven. But right now I'm so far behind, I'm going to be stuck on earth forever. <laughs> That's my favorite. I'll email that one out to everybody. Yeah. I think that's it. Um, all right, look, there's, there's two things. There's two points I want to make today. There is being overwhelmed and still maintaining your sanity and your relationship with God. It's okay. God says we're going to have trials and tribulations. You can be overwhelmed. You can struggle and do your best and keep going and keep that relationship with God going. You can draw on his strength. You can press on. So for me, life has been busy lately. Um, there's times people look at me and think I'm okay, and I do smile and say, hey, I'm fine. I'm good, like my wife. Um, but I don't fool her, really. Um, and sometimes I can be so overwhelmed that I'm busy, I'm doing things, and I really am okay. I'm just, I'm just busy. But sometimes people may read me wrong. You know, are you okay? I'm fine. I really am good. I'm fine. I'm, I'm all right. I'm going look good. I'm happy, okay? I'm all right. Yeah. But here's what I want to talk about today. But what if you're not okay? What if people around you aren't okay? What if they're so overwhelmed that they are not doing well? And that's what we're going to focus on. What if there's people that are so overwhelmed by the challenges in life that the times for being happy and content are so few that they're close to just giving up? They're overwhelmed by life's problems. And they're almost close to giving up on God. That feeling when people and issues are just coming from all sides and you just feel this pressure and you literally don't know where to go. You look around and you look at rooms and you look at outside and you just don't know where to walk. It just gets to be too much. And what's the worst reaction that we can have when we feel like that? 
I was praying about this. And I remember this story. I don't know, I, I really have not heard this story and taken this angle before, but I hope it speaks to you here. Jesus, you know, was betrayed by one of his own disciples. He was captured in a garden, taken away by soldiers. No doubt it was extremely stressful and overwhelming for his other disciples. In Mark 14, it talks about that, how they took Jesus to the high priest's home where all the other leaders and the priests and the elders were just berating Jesus. All the teachers of law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter f had followed, the disciple Peter followed Jesus to this place and was outside and even sat with the guards outside, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the priest and the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus to put him to death. They were quest questioning Jesus about who he was. Some of the leaders started to spit on Jesus. They blindfolded him. They beat him with their fists. And the guards slapped Jesus as they carried him away. And Peter was outside a wreck. He didn't know what to do. He was completely overwhelmed and stressed about what was happening around him and to the Savior Jesus. And Mark 14, 66 through 72, it specifically says, Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter was warming himself by the fire. She looked at him and said, Aren't you one of those? Aren't you one of those that are with Jesus of Nazareth? Pay attention to that word, with. Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. A and he ran away. He went out to the entryway and a rooster crowed. The servant girl saw him standing there. She began telling others and more people walked up to him and they said, yeah, this man is definitely one of them. One of them. But Peter denied Jesus again. A little later, other bystanders confronted Peter and said, you must be one of them because you're a Galilean. You were with Jesus. With Jesus. Peter swore, a curse on me if I'm lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. Suddenly Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times that you even know me. And then Peter broke down and wept. There were words I was telling you to pay attention to with one of them. See, because Peter was afraid. Seeing everything that was happening around him, Number two, he was overwhelmed. After seeing Jesus arrested and beaten, everything around him was just falling apart. Everything had been so good. Following Jesus, seeing his miracles. Following Jesus and listening to his word. Getting encouraged. And then suddenly everything fell apart. When things got tough, stressful, overwhelming, and suddenly when Peter was not too sure of what was going to happen in life... What did he do? What did he do? He ran. He ran from Jesus and denied him. That is the worst reaction you could have when you're under pressure and overwhelmed. You deny Jesus, you deny God, and you run. That cannot happen to us. That can't happen to you. When we get to the point where we're so stressed out and we're feeling this overwhelmed feeling that I'm just never going to get better and all things in life are just so tough, we cannot allow our despair and being so overwhelmed by life's struggles and trials that it makes us think that the thing to do is to run from Jesus and deny Him. If anyone has denied Jesus when things got overwhelming or tough, I've got good news for you. God knows what you're going through. He knows right where you are. And he's got a plan for us to overcome those feelings. So what happened to Peter? After the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples again. And during this time with the disciples in John 21, Jesus was with Peter again. And he asked Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes, you know I love you. And he asked him again, do you love me? Peter said again, yes, I love you. And for a third time, Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And he says, you know I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Two things. Most people agree that the reason why Jesus asked him three times 
if he loved him and gave him an opportunity to say, yes, I do, three times, was to overcome those three denials. That is what we can do. If we ran from God, if we've denied God, Jesus is always asking us, do you love me? We can go back and say, yes, you know we do. The second part about, about that was, during those tough times, Jesus was actually helping Peter to grow. To be a leader in the body of Christ. That's why he said, then feed my sheep. He had a plan for Peter, to be one of the great leaders. During the, one of the toughest times, there was a comeback that Peter had. And he came back to Jesus stronger than ever. To be the leader of the body of Christ there in Jerusalem. So what are the actions God wants us to do? when we go through these tough times that completely overwhelm us. I'm going to give you a few things. Number one, Psalm 61, 2 through 4. Cry out. Cry out. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Cry out. Oh God, listen to my cry. Hear my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I cry to you for help. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the towering rock of safety, for you are my safe refuge, a fortress where my enemies cannot reach me. Let me live forever in your sanctuary, safe beneath the shelter of your wings. Amen. That's Psalms, Old Testament. You figure God knew we were going to be overwhelmed at times? So here's your highlight about that verse. It says, lead me. Not... I will give up and run from you. I quit. I'm done. It's too much. It don't say that. It says, lead me. Because if you run from God when you're overwhelmed by life, where are you going to go to? Where else are you going to run to? That's going to make life any better or easier. Do you think it's going to be easier without God? You think it's easier going to be go through life with all that life throws at us? And walk away from a relationship with Jesus and just deny Him? And deny living, living, being guided by the Spirit? If you are looking to de-overwhelm ourselves and cut some things out of our lives to relieve stress, God is not the one you cut out. Number two, start your day with God. Matthew 6, 33. But first seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. That song, God Mood, that we sang today, I, I know we sing it maybe once or twice a month. Listen, when I, when I wrote that song, I, I'm telling you, I was in a place where I knew that the first thing I had to do in the morning was get up and give my life over to God, to dedicate the day to God, to not just be in a good mood, but I wanted to be in a, in a God mood. I wanted to recognize God as the leader of my day in every moment. And basically look at God and say, you know what, God, it's you and me today. Let's go after this day together. Don't let the first time that you talk to God be the end of the day when you get home and say, oh God, what a day. <laughs> As if he doesn't know how your day went. That just pretty much means you've gone through your entire day by yourself, without God. A morning prayer, a simple morning prayer, a time with God alone before you start your day. Stop. Dedicate your day to God. That's your priority. It is amazing how much stress is reduced when we talk to God throughout the day. Number three, make time for yourself and rest. I love Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 3 is great. Uh, it talks about the seasons and the things that we go through in life. Specifically, Ecclesiastes 3.4 says there's a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes talks about how under heaven there's a time for everything. As long as it's not a task that is displeasing to God. See, you can balance those things that you have to do with some things that you want to do. See, we deserve to spend time doing things that takes off some of that stress from us. A hobby. Something you enjoy. For me, I think maybe this is the reason why I'm so... I'm struggling a little bit right now. 
because it's not basketball season right now. <laughs> There's no NBA right now. There's no Lakers I can watch. And, and I don't really watch TV other than basketball games, like occasional family feud or something really, but I, not much. <laughs> I used to be addicted to TV. I barely watch it. Um, but I don't get any basketball until late October. I, I DV, DVR'd a few summer league games, but I got to find some other stress reliever for me. Football, yeah, I love football, but it's not like basketball. Yeah, uh, I'll probably put on some old DVDs of Lakers. I got a bunch of those. <laughs> but whatever it is that reduces your stress, make time for that. Walk, swim, maybe a little TV, a little bit of video games, everything proportioned, nothing displeasing to God. Whether you garden, you bowl, you exercise, you sit on the patio and just look at the sky with a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a quiet conversation with a friend, take your kids or your loved ones to the park or to a movie. Those are not the things that you delete out of your life. Those are stress relievers. This just came to me. Anybody remember Irma Bombeck? Back in the day, like in the 80s, she was popular about, you know, life sayings and things. And one of the things I remembered, one of her last books that she wrote was when she got diagnosed with cancer, I believe, and she only had a short time to live. She wrote this book and she said, if I could do it over again, the only thing that I would change would be, I wish I didn't care that the house was dirty and that I wouldn't have told my friends, nah, maybe not tonight, I'm too tired. Or when my daughter and my son came up to me and said, Mom, can we come out, can we go outside and play? I said, not now, Mom's too tired, I'm a little, I can't do it. She looked back in life and she realized that the things that she deleted out of her life were the things that would have given her the most joy and the most reduction of stress in her life. Don't delete those things from your life. Number four, plant yourself so that there's no walking away. Psalms 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. Here's the big one. And he shall be planted. He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, he shall prosper. The main point is that when you feel overwhelmed, don't give up and think about walking away like other people have. And we all know somebody that has. I know some very close people that no longer have a relationship with God. You cannot walk away. Plant yourself. Delight in the Word of God. And I was talking to a friend yesterday. And meditate. It's great to pray. It's great to talk. It's great to just listen. To sit in a quiet place and just think about how awesome God is. And just meditate. Have a quiet moment where you can just go to the Lord and just let go. And give things to God. Where you can find some peace and quiet, clear your mind, find a way to sit still and just feel, feel how much God loves you. And you'll start to see how strong you can become when you're firmly planted and you'll start seeing blessings in life that God has planned for you. So last one, I'm going to close with this. When you become overwhelmed by life, overcome that by being overwhelmed with how amazing Jesus is. There's some people that brought to Jesus a man who was deaf. He could hardly talk and could hardly speak. People begged Jesus to place his hand on this man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus touched the man. He looked up to heaven and said, Ephathatha, which means be opened. The man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Here's what you can remember. That's in Mark 7, verse 36 through 37. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone. But the more he did, the more they kept talking about it. They were excited. They saw Jesus. They felt him. In verse 37, it says, people were overwhelmed 
with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. That's the God we serve. Amen. That's Jesus. Let's be overwhelmed by that. Amen. Good. Amen. Psalm 61.2, again. I will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed. If we allow ourselves to run from God and when we get overwhelmed, and then our priorities are all off, and we have placed God on the bottom of our to-do list, let Jesus overwhelm us with who He is and not the things of this world. Don't let them overtake us. Don't let it make you want to run. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. I'll, I'll close with a prayer for you. Father, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, God, that when I got overwhelmed that I felt like running, that I allowed myself to be overwhelmed by the things of this earth, that I didn't go to Jesus and just be overwhelmed with His amazing love. I apologize for that, God. I ask that everybody here, Lord, can just dig in deeper and plant themselves firmly in how much you love them so that they can, they can just be overwhelmed with how amazing you are and plant themselves stronger than ever, Lord, and enjoy the things in life that will reduce that stress and tackle things that they have to do. Tackle those things that need to be done, Lord, but always go back to you and love you and praise you and worship you and be overwhelmed with how amazing you are. I thank you for that. I give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give the Lord some praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. God's awesome. <laughs>